Okay. So then S object also have uh, told you, na? S object. Mm, no. S object is only for Salesforce objects. That only he told. I mean, we are not getting to it. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Okay, so what S object is? All the objects mm -hmm. that you create in the Salesforce, okay? Let's say object. Okay. Okay, if you go to all the objects that you have in the Salesforce, see all the custom object or even the standard objects, whatever standard objects you have from here. Okay, so all these objects that are mentioned, so all these come under S object. Okay, so they are Salesforce objects. Any custom or standard objects that you create in Salesforce, they are called S objects. Okay. Okay. So just like if you go to opportunities and if you try to create any new opportunity, mm. then if you try to create one new opportunity, let's say. Okay. So here you have to put some required fields. Okay. You have to put one name, all these fields you have to fill in, right? So when you go in, when mm. you save it, okay, when you save it, one record is created. Okay. Just like that, if you want to create one record from here using the S object, so what you can do is we will open one anonymous window. Okay, so for mm -hmm. a normal uh, object for a sale uh, for a Apex class, how do you create a object for Apex class using new keyword, right? Mm -hmm. so we use mm -hmm. new keyword to create object for a, a class object. Okay, if you want to create object for a Salesforce S object, then also similar way you have to create using the new keyword. Okay, let's say if you want to create one object for, uh, let me, okay, let's say opportunity. Okay, so in that case, what you have to do is you have to first write opportunity. Okay, then you have to define one uh, variable for that. Let's say OPP equals to new opportunity okay so just like how you're creating object for a uh, apex class similarly you create mm -hmm. object for s object as well okay and the same applies for all the s objects let's say account also acc equals to new account okay so all this will work so so that's not only for the standard objects for custom objects also you can go ahead and do the same thing okay if you go to any custom object that we have let's say we have an object called uh, any other let's say hotels okay the object that we have created so for this particular object we have how many required fields that we'll see Okay, why required fields are important because when you create a new new record for this, there are some fields which are required. You have to populate the value for that particular field. Okay, unless you uh, enter the value here or whatever in, is in the required field, if you save it, it will not let you save. Okay, similarly, similarly, when you create an S object, okay, and if you try to insert it here, okay, if you try to insert that opportunity that you have created it will throw you an exception okay because the required fields are not met so if you execute the highlighted part now okay so insert mm -hmm. field the first exception because the required field is missing okay so these are the required fields it's a uh, it has clearly mentioned name stage name and close date so these things you have to mention before inserting into a database Okay, so before uh, going ahead with the S object, I'll give you some examples of what a DML operation is. Okay, so before going ahead, we need to know some of the DML operations. What's a DML operation? DML operation is, uh, let me open this. Okay, data manipulation language. It's a database manipulation language. Okay, it's not data manipulation, it's database because we are manipulating with the database. We are inserting database. records in the database, we are taking it out, we are deleting. Okay, so all that is DML operations. So there are a couple of DML operations which is available in Salesforce. Okay, mm -hmm. which is insert. Okay, 
update okay delete then you have undelete then you have upsert okay so all these are dml operations which is available to you then there is another class available for all this dml operation which is database class so using the database class also we can go ahead and we can do these dml operations okay so how to do that that we'll see later as of now we'll concentrate on the dml operations insert update delete and undelete and upsert okay so upsert let's put it upsert here after update we'll put upsert okay so what i insert will do whatever record that you have created okay like mm -hmm. uh, like this so insert will insert it into database okay it will try to insert okay. that record into the database okay let's see how insert works okay so as of now we uh, what we got an exception here saying that uh, this has to be uh, the fields of the required field has to be populated first Okay, mm -hmm. so that required field you can come here and from here also you can see what are the required fields. Anyways, it has given you the exception and you can populate those fields first. So we need to give one stage here, we need to give one close a close date and also we need to give an opportunity name. Opportunity. So there are two ways to add those required fields in the record. Mm -hmm. Okay, first way is through the constructor. So using this you can pass uh, the values here. Let's say name equals to you can put the name here uh, whatever the name you want let's say we will create one test opportunity okay and then separate it by comma so just like calling a constructor here you are calling the opportunity constructor and you are passing these values okay okay so name equals to test opportunity and then uh, close date for close date you have to create new instance okay new instance of the date new so that we will create and then apart from that you have to create one stage also so stage also you can populate let's say stage but here you have to use the api name okay that is the important part here you have to use the api name okay mm -hmm. instead of using the label or the field name this you cannot use opt as opportunity name this you cannot use as close date like this or stage like this so you have to use the api name so you can get the api names from here. So you just go here and view the fields. So whatever is the required that you have to put from here. So let's say our uh, first was opportunity name. Okay, so opportunity name. So the API name is name. So you have to use name actually. You don't have to use opportunity name. Okay. okay. Then you have to use stage. So stage. Then actual API name for stage is stage name. Okay. That the um, bro API name in the sense underscore underscore C will come na. No 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 API name. See, yeah, correct. That is there. Okay. Hmm. But even for like standard fields or standard objects, the name is there. Na? So that name you have to use. Okay. Okay. So field label you cannot use. Okay. Okay. So underscore underscore C will only come if it is custom. Okay. For standard direct name. Will for standard will come. underscore For standard underscore C will not come. Because uh, okay. underscore C means it's custom. For any custom object or custom field, okay, then underscore <coughs> underscore C will come. Okay. 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 So here name equals to this. Let's say. Uh, so we have to use the field names or the API names. Mm -hmm. Okay. So for close date, we have to use close date, like in a single word. So we have to put close date. Let's say we'll put uh, date dot today we'll put. Okay, so today's date we have put. Okay, and then we separate it by comma, and then you have to put stage name. Okay, so the actual name that you have to use while you while using the Apex, you have to use stage name instead of stage. Okay, so stage name we have to put here, and stage name is a pick list. So that pick list value you have to take. So let's say stay so either prospecting qualification closed one whatever you want you can choose it let's say we can choose prospecting we'll choose prospecting okay okay now we will try to insert this okay now we'll try to execute the highlighted part and let's see what exception we have got 
okay cannot insert update activity a workflow or approval process update caused an error so one workflow is there because of that it is not yeah okay so in that case what i will do is i will go ahead and log into my own org which is the new in that there is no approval process nothing like that so there will be no interruptions there okay so uh, let me log in here So even see while inserting the uh, record doesn't matter if you're inserting it from the developer console or if you're writing an apex or if you're inserting it directly. So whatever the rules or the validation rule or the approval process or whichever process is running normally that will run here also. Okay. Okay. So it is same. So then you cannot uh, escape those validation rules or approval processes or workflow rule. So all these things will be here also. Okay. 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 Mm, okay. Use this one. Okay. We can go to our sales application, and we can open our developer console from here. I'll just remove this anonymous window. We'll open one developer console here. Yeah, you can develop a console here. Okay. Before that, if you want to be sure that if there is any validation rule or something, then you can just go to setup. Or you can go to opportunity here. And we can see go to any opportunity. And we can see the validations from here. So let's say view validation rules. As of now, there's no validation rule. So if we see like view approval process, I don't think any approval is also there. As of now, there's nothing. So we should not have any difficulty in setting that here. Okay, okay. So now we'll go to our developer console and we'll close this out and we will open our anonymous window. Okay. Okay, now you tell me how do we create an uh, opportunity here? Where if you want to create one opportunity record, how do we create? Opportunity, some name under new opportunity first. <clears throat> okay, opportunity, let's say OPP equals to new opportunity. <clears throat> We have done. Okay. This we have done. Okay. Then. Mm. Then we have to give some mandatory field. Some. I mean, here if we if there is no mandatory field here, then we can directly insert the value. Okay. So we'll give some name here as test. <coughs> okay. Then we give one uh, close uh, date equals to let's say date today, dot, day. today you can give. Or let's say then we have to put one stage name. Okay, stage name equals to we'll put uh, prospecting. Okay, after we do that, till now the opportunity is available only in the code. Okay, it's not going to the in our database. So to put mm -hmm. it into the database to insert in the database, we need a DML operation. So we'll use insert OPP. Okay, so now it should be insert. Now, if we execute the highlighted part, so if you see, there is no exception here. Now if we go to our developer console, in our logs also, there is no error here. So, we will go to our org and we go to opportunity and one test opportunity should be inserted here. In the recent opportunities, we will see test opportunity. Okay. So whatever close date we gave, the today's date has come here and prospecting. So this is coming uh, as a, uh, what you call, uh, US timing. Okay, it's US time zone, uh, P, PST time. First month, yes. Yeah, it's PST. 
because today is sixth here okay but it's still mm. fifth there fifth there okay and whatever stage we chose prospecting according to that it is coming here okay if we chose any other stage it will come different okay so similarly whatever field you want to populate let's say if you want to put some amount also expected revenue or mm. account name if you want to include account name also okay that's a good thing so if you want to include one account name also then in that case how do we do because this is the field a relationship field okay mm. so in the relationship field actually if you see here in the lookup it will give you a couple of names to choose um, yes okay a couple of names you can choose from the account whatever account you have created those accounts you can mm. connect okay but using mm. the code how do you do okay using the apex or using the anonymous window how do you do so in that case you don't have to use the name so i think i have told you before also but that in the relationship field the field mm. will the actual data which is there in the uh, database that is the id okay so that's a 15 digit mm. id Mm, okay. 15 or 18 yeah that's 15 right. or 18 it depends yeah. okay id yeah. is same only but when you uh, re like uh, receive it from the or when you query it from the database it will come as 18 digit mm. okay so all the other if you see here it's all 15 digits 15 okay but in the database it's saved in the form of 18 digits when you re uh, query that it will come in 18 digits okay 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 so in the account name as it's a lookup relationship field here you have to populate one account name and you have to put one id you cannot give the name here okay so let's see okay. how you can insert account name as well okay so for that first we need the api name for this or whatever is the field name the actual field name that we need so how we can address that actually so we go to the view fields and here we pick up account name mm. so so account name to um, like address account name you need to write, write account here okay okay so let's come back to our database here our anonymous window so if you want to connect one account name even after insertion so if you uh, again put here let's say opp dot account equals to you put some id let's say if you put some 15 digit id for the account okay some random id you have given for account 15 digit okay if in case if you do that here and then you execute again okay execute the highlight button again what will happen is it will insert another record with the name of desktop okay here the same existing record is not updated Okay, so our existing test op, this will not be updated here. Okay, this will be creating another record. Okay, if you execute it, because here we are creating a new instance. Mm. Okay, so every time you create a new instance, a new record will be created. So we don't want to do that. Okay, as of now, our database has this test op already. So what we can do is we have to retrieve that from the database using SOQL. Okay. So anything that you want to retrieve from the database, you need SOQL for that. Any record that you want to fetch from database, okay, for that you need SOQL. Okay, okay. so using SOQL, you can retrieve any of the objects that you have created or even if it's a standard object, all those you can retrieve. Even if you want to retrieve some, uh, let's say, report or maybe some list view, all those things also you can retrieve because everything that you save in the database, it's saved in the form of ID. Okay, so using that ID or using the name of the report or using the name of the list view, you can retrieve those from the database using SOQL. Okay, so in this scenario here, we'll have to retrieve this opportunity with the name of test opportunity. Okay, and once we retrieve that, then we can update the account. Okay, so before updating the account, what we can do is we will have to, we can create one variable. Okay, we can create as many as many variables as we want, but it will not create a new instance. So we'll have to create one placeholder for that opportunity that we are trying to retrieve from the database. Okay, because the database will give you the object. It will give you the opportunity object, but you have to address it somehow, like you have to hold it in some place. Right, so for that you need one variable. Okay. okay, so what we'll do here is we will write one opportunity. Let's say we'll write OPP only equals to, and here we'll write one SOQL query. 
okay so in order to be sure that you are writing the correct sql query you can go to the developer console and you go to the query editor query editor okay here you can just go ahead and type and you can check if the query is working fine or not okay so what you write is you have to select so first you write one select statement select then then what do you write from no select no. from we have to select from some account name now yeah you have to select from account name but you cannot write select from directly so there are two statements i'll tell you one more time select from and then where there are three things when you're writing as sql query there are three things select okay. from and where these are the basic yeah. things so after select statement okay after select statement you have to write what are the fields that you want to select that is the first thing okay so you okay. have to select like name or id or account name whatever it is so whatever field which is available like these fields mm -hmm. are there so these fields mm -hmm. first you have to write here okay so once first the first step will be like field so okay. what you want to do is you want to select the fields select the fields okay so once you have the fields sorted like what all fields you want then you have to choose which object you want to retrieve it from so here what you give is you give the object name okay so you give the name of the object here from which object mm -hmm. you want and using soql you can retrieve from only one object at one time okay unless those objects are related if they are uh, if there is no relation between two objects then you cannot retrieve two objects at one time okay okay so using this you can retrieve the child objects of opportunity as well if you were using opportunity as object name okay or even the parent if you want you can retrieve the parent but there has to be some relationship then you can use okay. two objects and you can select the two object fields okay 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 so select statement you got then we got from so from you have to use one object name here from which okay. object you want to retrieve so after okay. that yeah correct where correct so after that it comes the where where in this where you have to put some condition like it's not required okay and this where condition is not required if you don't put any where condition that means it is a select all statement okay so now it will select all the records from that particular op object and the fields that you men mentioned sorry okay so by default all the query will be like select star only okay but you cannot write select star it's not valid in sql so in if you uh, talk in form of like sql long language so the there you have to do select all or select star to get all the records okay but here by default salesforce will give you all the records Okay. okay unless you put any where condition so here what we want to do is we want to retrieve only the opportunity with the name of test opportunity okay we want only this opportunity to retrieve so in that case what we want to do is select whatever fields from whatever uh, object then we will put one where condition where uh, what is the field where name name, name equal to test. To. so here we'll put test opportunity test opportunity so here we have to put test opportunity okay so instead of fields so here we account. have to write let's say no not account as of now account yeah. is blank right now no, no we have to we have to retrieve account name no there that field name is account there yeah that field is account there but right now there is no value there Wait, let me show you okay right now in the account of that particular test opportunity there is no value right Mm. there is no value yes. as of now if you want you can retrieve that no problem that will retrieve okay. but it doesn't make sense what we have to do is we have to retrieve this whole object first okay okay so we have to retrieve the whole object first and then we have to insert that particular uh, field in that particular object so here we are trying to get a grasp of this particular object okay so we are grabbing this object and then we can change any field we want Okay. Yeah. So as of now, you can put anything here. Like in the SQL, you can retrieve any field. Doesn't matter. You just have to get one opportunity, which with the uh, name is test opportunity. 
so you can select anything let's say you can select id comma uh, let's say account only okay let's select account only. okay so as of now the account will be blank from which object we want from opportunity we want okay so here we will choose from opportunity where name equals to test of Okay. and uh, just to be sure that it's this opportunity only we'll put stage name also okay so to add one or more uh, like filter conditions you can use and clause here so you can use and so where name equals to test opportunity and where stage name equals to prospecting you can put it here okay now if you execute we will got an error okay let's see what is the error. select id account okay okay so if you see as of now the account id is blank okay mm -hmm. so we got that particular object only that object is coming here so so that soql will always re result into a list okay so if you on the return type okay the return type of soql okay is always a list okay it will always be a list okay but you can use uh, an object also to save it in certain conditions you can also use one map to save it you can also use sets to save it okay but that by default it will always give you a list okay okay so in which condition it will you can use one object to save it if the list contains only one uh, like record okay so if this list contains only one record then you can save it in in one one certain object okay if it is returning like more than one record then you have here in the left side left hand side you cannot use one single object here you will have to use one list okay okay so that we'll see later Okay, as of now, let's try to just retrieve. So we will put one opportunity variable here, op equals to, uh, sorry, not new. Here we have to write one SOQL query. So we take our SOQL query and we put it in this bracket here. Okay, and semicolon is must in Apex after end of the line. Okay. Okay, so select ID, account ID from opportunity where name equals to uh, test top and stage name equals to prospecting. So this will give you the hold of that particular object this object whatever we created So now we will be back to the same position so that we can put some account there account ID Okay You got this point Yes, yes, okay. if you have any doubt you can ask me. Okay. No problem. Okay. Okay, so now this should give you the opportunity so let's try to just uh, see what we have so we'll put one system dot debug and we'll put whatever the op is there okay let's see what the result is okay then we execute the highlighted part okay. okay now we go to our developer console and one log should be generated for us we'll put one debug log here so if you see opportunity id is showing us this Okay, mm -hmm. but as there is no value in the account ID, so it is not showing that. Okay. Okay. So if you put some more information here, let's say if you want some name also, let's say name, also you want, and uh, let's say if you want some stage name also. Okay. So all these things it will show you. Now if you go ahead and and if you execute this, so all these things it will display for you. Now if you debug, see so now you see the name is there, stage name is there, okay, and the ID is there, okay, okay. So as of now we have got the hold of that particular object. So that means we can manipulate this object right now. We can manipulate the record. Hmm. Okay, so now we can manipulate the record. So what we can do is we'll remove this line, and here we will write opportunity dot account okay equals to we'll put one id of one account okay so we need our one id of any account to associate so we can either go to an account here uh, and go to all accounts and we can pick up any id let's say we want to okay this one 
so we pick up this id and we can put it inside this okay here we have to put opportunity dot account id okay now let's try to execute this or no okay okay fine let's try to uh, execute and then let's try to system dot debug so system dot debug what we will do is we will uh, show the value of only the account id and see if that account okay. id is updated or not okay okay or we can okay we will put opportunity again here okay so the whole object will be displayed along with the uh, stage name or along with the account id it will show the account id as well okay so if the account id is inserted it will show the account id so let's try to execute this one more time okay so we will execute the highlighted now we go to our developer console and one log should be generated okay we debug hmm. and if you see here account id is inserted here Okay. Yes. okay so one account id is inserted here okay so usually we are not we should not be doing like hard coding it okay what else you can do is you can retrieve the account id from the account object using the mm -hmm. um, query only okay so how you can do that is similar fashion how we uh, retrieve the opportunity object or the opportunity record similarly we can retrieve the account record also so yeah correct so here we are retrieving just one record right so that's why we can use our one object as well if you have to retrieve like more than one then it will directly throw you an error that it is not able to assign a list to one single object mm -hmm. okay because this is um, capable of holding only one object but this this is a list this will always result into a list if you do a sql query it will result into a list yes okay let me show you that also okay uh, by default it will always be a list if you want let me go ahead and check it out so we'll create one list of opportunity uh, okay and here in the, as opportunity is a list so in this case you have to use the index of that particular list so as of now this in uh, list will check the size of the list as well okay so system dot debug what we can do is we can do op dot size i think it's size or length i don't know length. anyways we'll check it out okay so now in this case uh, we'll put one message also here uh, array or maybe list size okay so opportunities uh, of uh, okay this list uh, index of this list so this is the zeroth uh, array okay or the zeroth index so the zeroth index will have the because it is retrieving only one record so it should be in the first uh, index only okay so mm -hmm. array always starts from zero okay array or the list uh, always starts from zero so the first value which the, which will be in the list that will always be from zero 0 1 2 3 4 5 and it will increase yeah. like that okay okay now if here if you want to debug you can debug like this also okay so now let's try to execute this and let's see what we get so account id is already there so hmm. here only it will uh, be available so we don't have to do this what we can do is we can put this also in the system dot debug log we can put system dot debug opportunity zero dot id okay and we can mention one comment here that this is our account id okay the account id okay now let's try to execute this and let's see what happens okay <coughs> okay now one log is getting generated here mm. okay so if you see the size of the list is one one okay and the account id is null as of now yes okay so we did not update the account mm. okay and here the opportunity name all these things are coming 
okay so all the values are coming here okay so now let's go back to our developer console here and let's see uh, we go to our opportunity and let's see if the uh, account is connected here or not okay if you see here still there is no account connected here mm. okay because why that is happening because we did not update it okay in the previous uh, if you let me just save this code first control C and let me just undo everything okay if you go back in time here let me undo everything it was not a list okay so we were here so in this if we have updated the account ID but we have not inserted in the database mm. okay so after this what we have to do is we have to update opportunity okay so now when we update and now if we give opportunity dot account ID okay now it should give us one account ID Okay, because we are updating the opportunity and that field whatever field we are adding that field is getting updated Okay, so now if we execute highlighted And we come to our developer console We debug this Okay, and that ID is coming here. So just to cross verify. Let's refresh this one account name should be populating here Okay, okay so unless you do the DML operation if you insert mm. or update it will not be updating the database okay okay that is only for the uh, any relationship or something no 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 that's for everything mm. let's say if you want to update some amount also or let's say okay. if you want to update some type okay what type is this uh, let's say new customer we'll update to new customer and we'll see if that is working or not okay so if you go to our execute anonymous here so so this is updated so that is done so what else we can do is so now if you write opportunity that will not work okay that will not work because if you execute only this line only this line will not recognize opportunity so what we will do is we will execute this line we will copy this and we'll come back here okay so now again we got the uh, grab of that particular opportunity where the uh, name was a test opportunity and stage name was prospecting okay yes. if you want you can add another condition here and uh, let's say account id is not equal to uh, null okay this will also give you same thing so this will verify that our account ID is having some value it is not having any null value mm -hmm. okay okay so now we got that opportunity now we have to update one field right so which field we want to update we have to update the type so type. I think for type it's the same type only okay for type it's type only so here we can write opportunity dot type equals to uh, we'll take it from the pick list here what is the type it was new customer so mm -hmm. how is it spelled a new customer okay so we can put as it's a string we have to put new uh, quotes and then you have to put new customer okay 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 now if you system dot debug and if we ty use type here <coughs> excuse me so mm -hmm. if we use uh, type here it will display you the value of the type it will give you new customer okay but it is not mm -hmm. coming from database Okay, it is coming from this particular moment here, this instance here. It is picking it from, yeah. from here. Okay, we'll cross verify. Okay, we'll cross verify. Now let's try to execute the highlighted part and let's see what happens. Now, if we go to our developer console, okay, we go to debug. Our new customer is coming. Okay, new customer value is coming here. But let's try to yeah. cross verify that in here. If we refresh this, that type. See that type is not here. Yes. Okay. So why it is showing in the debug log? It's showing it from here. Opportunity dot type we have already mentioned as new customer. So it has updated the variable. Okay, but it is not okay. updating the database. Okay. We okay. need to write update. Yes. So we need to write one 
update statement now we have to update the opportunity again okay now if we execute this execute the highlighted part now our database will be updated okay so now the type will be populated as a new customer here okay 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 hmm okay so this is all about insert and update if you want you can go ahead and delete this record also okay, okay. let's say if you uh, retrieve the whole opportunity and instead of updating let's try to uh, okay instead of that what we can do hmm. let's retrieve the record once again okay hmm. and let's try to delete this record and let's see what happens we'll delete the opportunity okay now if we execute the highlighted part okay now if we go to our record here okay if you see a record your attempt to access has been deleted mm. okay so the user who deleted this record may be able to recover it from the recycle bin deleted data is stored in the recycle bin for 15 days so it will be in the recycle bin for 15 days you can undelete it Okay. okay, you can undelete within 50 days, 15 days, but after 15 days, it will be uh, removed from the recycle bin as well. Okay. Okay. So in that case, what we can do is once we have retrieved this, this will be in the database. Okay. So what we can do is we will undelete it. Okay. Let's try to execute this and let's see what happens. Okay. As of now, there is nothing here. Okay, mm -hmm. because this has been deleted from the database. Okay. Okay. So you will have to go back to the recycle bin here. Uh, let's say go to the recycle bin. And here you will see our test opportunity is there. So you can check it mm -hmm. and you can undelete it. Okay. Okay. Now if you go to our opportunities back. Here we'll see our test opportunity again. Yes. Okay. 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 All right. So there is another DML operation, which is upsert. Okay. So what upsert does? Let's say in some instance, if you are not able to figure out if if that and that record is already there in the database or if it's a new record. Okay. okay so if it's already there in the database then it will just go ahead and update that particular field that you add okay, okay. and if that is not there in the database then upsert will in, in, in insert it like at meet means it will create yes it will create so using upsert you can create also so let's okay. check it out how it works okay so let's go to our anonymous window. Let's say if you have retrieved that particular uh, from here, or if you use upsert here, okay. test upsert <coughs> operation. Okay, close it today. Stage name equals to this. Blah blah blah. Okay, let's try to check this out. See, even upsert is working. So now if you go to our org here, if you go to opportunity, we should see one record test upsert operation. Yes. Okay. Now that uh, our record is already existing in that and we are not aware whether if it's there or not. Okay. As we are retrieving then like basically we are aware that it's there, but there are lots of situations maybe in triggers. Okay. Or somewhere uh, you are executing the code and you are not aware if that is going to that uh, record is already there or not. In that case, you can use upsert. If it's there, it will update the same existing one. If it's not there, it will create a new one. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So let's say if you okay. want to add any field here, let's say if you want to add one account ID here. Okay. This you can do using upsert also. Let's say if you want to do something like uh, instead of update here, you can use upsert. Okay, and okay. instead of name where name equals to test opportunity, you can use test upsert operation. Okay, you can do it like this, and that upsert update will work. Upsert will also work. Okay, if you use upsert here, that is also going to do the same thing. 
Okay. Okay. So here the database or uh, the Salesforce will decide whether it has to do an insert operation or here where, whether you have to do a update operation. I would read Okay. So both the things you can do it from here. Okay. So these things are mostly handy when you are using triggers. Okay. So when we get into triggers, then we will get into the usage of upsert. Okay. 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 So. okay let's check out some of the uh, custom objects okay and let's see how to handle those custom objects custom objects okay. so if we go here to our hospitality application okay and let's check it on check out some let's say hotels okay so here if you create one new there's only one required field which is the hotel name okay, okay. there's no other required field so this will be the same so we'll not get into this we'll check out some school here let's see if we have some fields here okay one school name is there and one annual fees there both of them are required field okay okay we'll so create one more some yeah yeah we can create one more. last date okay 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 so what i want you to do uh you can show your screen okay i'm changing the presenter can can you show see uh, show your screen and there i'll give you the access you go ahead and create that field for me yeah okay, okay. let me know when you're ready so that you can show that now okay so i'll make you the presenter okay okay now i can see yours i should be able to see your screen Okay, let's just log in and I'll give you the credentials. You can go ahead and use that particular org. Yes, then you then one second. Let me just try to log out from here. Okay, I'll ping you in the chat. Okay. Okay, so this is the ID and the password should be. Okay, try this password. Okay, maybe yeah, it's maybe the password. Okay, it's okay, it's okay. I'll, I'll create the field, no problem. Okay. Okay. Okay, so we go to schools here. And we'll create one new field here. Okay. Okay. So, what kind of field you want? Date. Okay. So, we'll choose a date field and we'll click on next here. Okay. And the field should be. Last due date or due date or last date to pay. Okay, due date. Or we can say fees due date or last date something. Okay. 
you can put some information like last date to pay the fees yeah you want this to be a required field always required no. required no okay fine no okay we'll click next and it should be we'll click next here also the page layout okay you have to add it in the page layout no problem okay so as you see here now the api name is underscore underscore c because it's a custom yeah. okay and then the api name is underscore underscore c Okay, so that is our school object and if you go to the fields here all the API names will be mentioned here So fees last date that is our uh, API name So using this we can get a hold of this particular field and you can update or manipulate this field Okay, okay. using apex Okay, okay, let's try to see how we can handle that Okay So let's try to do one simple SQL query and let's try to uh, retrieve uh, some values or uh, okay let's try to create one school okay let's try to create one school record and see how that works so the required fields are one is school name and one is school annual name. fees annual fees okay and if you see the annual fees this is the api name and the school name is always a standard field so that name will be name name okay so in the anonymous window what we can do is similarly as we created uh, a new record for opportunity so we have to do one yeah here what we'll write school okay schools i think schools huh? no it's not school see this, okay. this we have to use okay okay and this is what we have to use because it's a custom every custom object or uh, custom field you have to use underscore underscore c mm. okay so we'll put uh, we'll use any object name let's say sch yes, yes. new and then again what we will put is school Okay. Cool. And then underscore underscore C. Mm. Okay, this is mandatory. Okay. So now one okay. school record will be created. Now if you go ahead and if you do insert <laughs> SCH, it will try to create one school record. Okay, but here cool. we will get one exception because the required field is not populated. Now if you go ahead and yeah. execute highlighted, it will give us an exception. Oh, the session expired. I logged out, right? Okay. Mm. Okay, okay, one second. So we'll cut this. Okay. Mm. One Well, we don't have to do that we can use this one as well okay well, let's try to put it here let me quickly log in okay okay let's log in okay now let's try to open our developer console okay maximize this and we'll open our anonymous window. Okay, maximize the anonymous window as well. Okay. Now, uh, what we have to do is we have to go to our schools, and from here we have to create one record. So, what we have to do is we just have to put one school. Okay. School underscore underscore c okay uh, use any variable name sch equals to new school underscore underscore c constructor okay now we will insert our sch okay now we try to execute this okay, and let's see what happens okay the required field is missing same thing okay and what field is that that is annual fees okay. yes so let's try to insert that field here sch dot uh, annual annual fees let's see what is the name for that it's the fields so 
okay where is, okay this is our field okay so annual underscore f e s okay after that yes. underscore so c okay here it should be one amount field currency field is there okay so currency field what we can put is let's say 1000 dot uh, as we have three digits of decimal you can put three decim decimals that is not required as of now okay now we will try to insert okay and now we try to execute the highlighted part and we'll see what happens okay now we go to our school mm -hmm. our school's object okay so automatically one is created okay. mm -hmm. yes. so here we don't want this we have to put one school name so by default if you don't put uh, this name here okay automatically it put the id only okay so that id only it will generate and populate it here okay 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 so we'll put some school name let's say uh, we'll put some dps okay okay and we will save it okay so this is how you can get hold of a, a custom object okay and you can create a new custom record you can manipulate the custom record okay like custom fields everything you can change let's say fees last date so if you last mm -hmm. date also if you want to change then you can do it from here also okay so what you can do is ch dot uh, uh, fees underscore last underscore date underscore, underscore c equals to let's last. say date or uh, today let's say today is our today. last day can it will automatically get you the today and get you today's date but now if you go ahead and insert that it will create a new record okay so that is why we have to retrieve it first okay so what we can do is we we need some placeholder for that record to be saved okay mm -hmm. so we need to create one variable for that so let's say sch only that is fine equals to here we have to write one soql query so we have to write select so after select what we have to write select what i mean what we need to select like fees huh. annual, annual Correct. That Correct. We have to... so we can put name we can put one name. id okay and then after that we have to write from so after okay. from what we have to write A school okay so school, we have to write school underscore underscore c from school okay then now, we can give condition also if we want like yes. where annual fee is thousand or like that. correct so we can give that so as of now let's try to leave it blank and let's see what happens okay, okay. now let's try to execute the highlighted part so it is list has more than one row for assignment to s object okay so in the s mm -hmm. object so all these are child, child children of s object only okay all the parent class is actually as s object s object is also a class okay that we'll see later okay as of now mm -hmm. you just imagine that this is a placeholder for only one object but what this mm -hmm. is resulting into let's try to check it out what is the result of this query okay so let's go to our developer console and let's try to enter it in our query editor okay so here if you see there are three records it's retrieving mm -hmm. so it's retrieving three records and here we are trying to assign the three records into just one s object okay so obviously that will throw us an error it, it, it is not compatible with each other right so mm -hmm. if this was resulting in it uh, resulting in, in only one record then this will be fine then this will work fine okay 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 now if we put one where condition here where uh, let's say name equals to we can put uh, tps bocaro so only that that record will be updated inside this variable okay. okay and then after that if we let's try to do one system dot debug and let's try yes. to sch okay now if we try to execute this highlighted part we will get it in our developer console here okay so that fields those, those fields that we have retrieved those fields have come here so if we uh, retrieve fees as well uh, or maybe 
you can do is fees underscore last underscore date underscore underscore c now if we do that that field will be blank because as of now there's no value in that today it will okay, be today, today. today okay okay so that will come as today only okay is mm. last date from school okay okay we try to update this it has not updated that yet fees yeah. last date did we execute this line of code no 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 that is why it has not updated so so that is why it's showing us blank here so what we can do is we can do sch dot uh, we can just copy this line and we can paste it here update and then we can do this debug okay so after that we have to do an update as well okay or else it will not re reciprocate in the database okay now if you execute the highlighted thing and if you go to the developer console now it should show the date as well okay now here the date as well is coming fees last date is coming and that date should reflect here as well okay so that is coming here also okay so there are certain functions also that you want to uh, you can use okay like you can add number of days add number of months also all those things you can do so when we explore the date object more then we can see that okay so whatever i told you today is that all clear you have any doubts any questions I can't hear you. Hello. 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 Yes. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. I can yes. hear. You. So you have any yes. questions? Any any doubts? Any things you are any yes. you ask? Here, if you go, we can insert elements like uh, sch dot uh, fees last date like that. We can insert now. No. Like that we oh, cannot insert. Okay, update. Okay, okay. Yes, I got it. Once you did update, then only it will reflect in the database page. Database. Okay. Yes. Fine. Yes. Only then it will. So if you insert, then you have to insert one record. Okay. Okay. So you cannot insert like sch dot fees last date equals to something that you cannot insert like that. Okay. 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 You can update. You can uh, update, uh, insert, or op update. All these are directly in, on the uh, S objects. You have to use this DML operation on the S objects. Okay. 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 Anything else uh, that you want to add? No. Fine. Today I will try this. Okay, so if you try this, try for all the S objects that you have created the custom objects. Try to retrieve those fields. Okay, check out the uh, uh, standard fields as well. See the relationships. Try to retrieve the okay. relationship field. Okay, and see what what value you get. Okay. Okay, if you get the ID or if you get the name, try to get the name of that particular uh, uh, field. Okay, try to get. Let's okay. say in the opportunity, try to get the name of the account. Okay, that will be the task okay. for your day. Okay. You can use search, no problem. You can search it out on internet, and you can okay. give me the solution. Okay, so what you have to do is you have to, if you go to the uh, sales application here, opportunity name, we have to. No, you have to retrieve the account name. Okay, so if you go to okay. all opportunities here, so if you see, mm -hmm. uh, here account name is there. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I want you to retrieve, uh, give me a list just like this. You retrieve all the opportunities with their account name. Okay. Okay. So only field I want is account name and opportunity name. Okay. Okay. So just write the query and let me, uh, give me the answer. Okay. okay. 
okay okay that's it from my side uh, unless you have any questions we can wind up for the day no bro as of now no questions okay please try and uh, if you get doubts let me know okay 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 then okay that's it thank you bye 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 bro